Hello friends, welcome back or welcome into the channel if this is your first time here. My name is Big Winter and today I'm not going to waste any of your time and I'm here to bring you your weekly roundup of gaming's biggest stories and news releases. So first, the good. Kicking things off, a game that has absolutely no right making its way into the spotlight, No Man's Sky. Rapidly approaching its 8th birthday, I don't think anyone could have guessed that this game would be getting its biggest peak in player count since the massive overhauls all the way back in 2019. After flopping so disastrously at launch, I'm genuinely very impressed with how Hello Games turned things around and I'm sure many of you out there are similarly excited for their next adventure, Light No Fire. Now the reason No Man's Sky has hit the spotlight lately is Hello Games are still updating the game with the most recent patch named World Part 1. With this huge patch, the game engine has been massively updated to allow for more frames along with greater quality and lighting, terrain, oceans and overall improved levels of detail. With this patch came a massive update to new missions as well as character weapon, ship and armor customization but also brand new worlds, environments with new flora and fauna. All in all, this is truly game-changing. Now this raises a huge question in the gaming industry. Many developers would have abandoned the project this many years on, especially when they have a new venture currently underway and nearing launch in the next year or so. And yet, these engine developments are still being pushed into No Man's Sky. Why aren't more teams doing this? Why abandon games with an avid player base? For example, Counter-Strike 2 or Overwatch 2. They were essentially just overhauls of already existing and still popular games. I know Counter-Strike did it much better than Overwatch as CS2 and CS Go are still the same game title on Steam, but with Overwatch, why not simply overhaul that base game instead of shutting it down entirely? Food for thought. Now, continuing the theme of naming and shaming, whilst there are whispers about an Unreal 5 overhaul to Apex Legends, this week's story is not so positive. I think it's safe to say that EA are notorious for, let's just say, interesting monetization in their games, especially as of late with exotic shards and reskins in Apex Legends. But even for them, this takes the cake. Some of you may have seen the new Battle Pass system for Apex that EA proposed earlier this month, and it was not good. To summarize, they were proposing to do away with the typical free-to-play model where you bought your first battle pass and if you completed it, you could get the next one with the in-game currency you earned, essentially rewarding you for your playtime and dedication to the game. Instead, they were going to charge $9.99 for the premium with the extra premium bundle for $19.99, which would have only been purchasable with real money, making your in-game coins essentially worthless. Furthermore, a battle pass in Apex is typically 110 levels and lasts for about three months months, giving you plenty of time to clock those hours in. The EA are planning to run the battle pass every half season, which means if you want all 120 levels completed, you either need to spend 20 or $40 a season, which is absolutely bonkers. Now, I love Apex and it's been my game for a long time now, but this was honestly the saddest thing I've ever seen as a fan of the game. But EA have since reacted to that backlash and put out a new statement reverting the change that meant you had to spend money, but they're keeping the new battle pass system on the half seasons. With this updated model, you can get the split one pass, by completing challenges and you can get the split two with your coins and they did confirm that the coins you earn in the past will cover future passes and these changes will come into effect in season 22. Whilst this is better, the fact that this was their centerpiece of change and their priority is kind of nuts to me. The game has had several issues with cheaters, the engine and audio for a while and no statement was made on that until the backlash was received. But since then, they reiterated that these will be seen to in the patch notes for next season, but I'll believe it when I see it. Don't be like EA devs out there, be like Larry and Studios. Which leads me perfectly onto the next story of Baldur's Gate 3. Now, if you've been following me long enough, you'll surely have heard me say that I think Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the best games to have ever been made. It genuinely has something to offer everyone, even if you're not a big D&D fantasy nerd, but if you are one like me, then you surely fell in love with it too. And to support this claim, despite its full launch almost a full year ago, the game still has a daily play account of over 100,000 people on Steam alone, which is absolutely nuts. Since its launch, Larian has been putting many other studios to shame with their consistent updates and patches pushed, pushing the game to newer and greater heights. With updates to quality of life, complete changes to certain storylines and character arcs, as well as the addition of Honor Mode, this game has been an absolute treat and I wholeheartedly recommend it if you haven't given it a go already. I'll be posting my review of Baldur's Gate 3 at some point on the channel, so drop a like and sub if you're enjoying the content, you have my thanks. Now to start to round things out, I wanted to do a little bit of a quick fire round and to talk about some of the games you can expect to release and big game updates updates in the next coming weeks. Starting this round, we have a statement released by a former Rockstar developer who warned that GTA 6, despite having to have waited nearly three full years from announcement to possible launch date, will still unfortunately be limited by the current hardware and players should be expecting gameplay not too dissimilar than GTA 5, but in the new Miami setting. To me, I never fully got into GTA 5, so I'm not really heartbroken, but I know this may come as sad news to some, so hopefully more light will be shed in the newest upcoming trailer. For all my fellow Helldivers, the light is shining through 
once again. Now, I'll put a separate video out on all of the new changes, but we have some massive things coming on the 6th of August, including new enemies, new objectives, mission types, and a brand new difficulty entirely. All in all, I am super excited for this. Jumping back to Overwatch 2, the newest support character Juno is currently available to all on a trial period, but will release fully with Season 12. Whilst her trailer was really something, commentary has it that she's actually one of the most balanced support heroes added, although I'm yet to play her, so don't quote me. From a hailing colony on Mars, she can double jump, has a primary and secondary weapon attack that heals allies and damages enemies. She's got a speed boost mechanic like Lucio, and her ultimate is a big orbital version of Moira's beam that both heals and boosts the allies' damage. If you do give her a go, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Honestly, this next one is super goofy, but for all of you who both love Elon Musk and Fortnite, first of all, what a wild demographic that is, but boy, do I have some news for you. The Tesla Cybertruck made its way into Fortnite on the 23rd of July and is also being slotted into Rocket League. Personally, I only play Fortnite with the wife when she feels like it, and the most recent season around the cars and trucks was absolute ass, but this does make me laugh a little. Enjoy running down your foes in a pointlessly angular vehicle. Now, whilst this next one is not new, one of the most poorly received games in recent history is making its way to Steam. Skull and Bones was released on Game Pass in February 2024 and received some of the most brutal feedback on a game that I've seen in all my years. So in case you missed it and didn't pick it up on Game Pass, you will have the pleasure of purchasing it on Steam 22nd of August. Why they've done this, I just, I don't know, but best of luck to them. Speaking of Game Pass, Modern Warfare 3 will be the first Call of Duty title making its way to Game Pass since Microsoft's acquisition of Blizzard back in 2023. This will happen on July 24th, and whilst I care not for Modern Warfare 3, this does open the door to having newer titles making their way to Game Pass for people to enjoy without a full purchase. On to some Star Wars news, we've actually got two games on the horizon, first of which is the remake of 2002 Star Wars Bounty Hunter, releasing the 1st of August on PS4 and PS5, with optimizations for the newer hardware. To be honest, this is cool, but what I'm more interested in is the new Star Wars Outlaws game dropping later next month, 27th of August. Star Wars Outlaws will be the very first open world RPG set within the Star Wars universe, between the events of the Empire Strikes Back and the Return of the Jedi. In it, you will play as Kay Vess, a scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life. To be honest, I want to play through this on stream at launch, but for $70, it better be good. And the journalism reviews so far are not leaving much of a positive impression, so stay tuned for more news. And finally, a game I've been keeping tabs on for a while, the very promising action filled RPG Black Myth Wukong will be dropping on the 19th of August. So definitely stay tuned for some gameplay from myself once that drops. But that's it for this week's roundup. There were more stories, but I'll save them for future developments. Drop a like and sub if you've enjoyed and ding that bell so you're notified of next week's video. Until then, much love and happy gaming.